So today I'd like to talk to you about some more crazy fluid equations. In our last episode, we were looking at finding the velocity of the fluid when it came out of our beverage container. And we found a nice simple result. We found that the velocity was equal to the square root of the quantity two times gravitational field times height. All kinds of things canceled out. The size of the faucet, atmospheric pressure, the type of fluid, they all did not matter and we got this final result. What I'd like to do now is view that same situation, but this time in terms of energy. So as the fluid comes rushing out of the faucet, it carries with it kinetic energy. That kinetic energy should be equal to the loss of potential energy as the fluid level drops. So if we found the fluid that was in this top area and assume that same amount of fluid comes out of the faucet, which it must because of conservation of matter, we would see that the potential energy lost by the drop in height is equal to the kinetic energy of the fluid coming out of the faucet. Last year, we learned our formulas for potential energy and kinetic energy. And since both of them have the same mass, the mass of the fluid lost from the container equals the mass of the fluid that came out of the faucet. They can cancel out. We bring the one half over and we get a formula that looks like this. We're calling our velocity V2. So we get V2 equals the square root of two times gravitational field times height. The same exact result we got the other day. The difference is this time we're viewing it from the standpoint of energy. The one we did the other day was more important because it showed us why the fluid was accelerating and all of those things in terms of pressure, accelerations and forces. But this shows us that the law of conservation of energy still applies to fluids. Now we'd like to get to something that's a little bit harder. This is going to be kind of tricky. I'm going to try and go slow, but fast enough that the video doesn't take too long. Pause it if I go too fast. So this time we're putting a lid on our container and trapping some air above the fluid. We can call that pressure inside that pocket of gas, pressure of the gas. We still have atmospheric pressure at the outlet for our faucet. These two pressures are no longer necessarily the same. Chances are they won't be. So we can pressurize our tank or we could decrease the pressure in the tank and we will get different results. If we put more gas pressure into this pocket of gas than the pressure of the atmosphere, then the fluid will come out faster than we predicted with our previous equation. If, however, the gas pressure is lower than atmospheric pressure, now our fluid will come out more slowly. Okay, so if we want to find the actual speed we need to get the pressure right at the inlet to the faucet. We're going to call that P1, just like we did last time. Now, when we write pressure 1, just like last time, it's fluid density, gravity, height. But now we add to that the gas pressure pushing down on the fluid. It's not atmospheric pressure anymore. Pressure 2 at the outlet of the faucet is still atmospheric pressure. The problem is when we find our delta P, the atmospheric pressure no longer cancels out with the gas pressure. There are different amounts of pressure and we get a much more complicated equation. When we then put that into our force net over area equation, we get an incredibly complicated expression that looks like this. But again, we're just substituting in and hopefully the algebra is not that hard. Again, we're going to be doing the area of the faucet. So we have pi r squared. 
Our final formula for force net is an absolute mess. Things don't cancel the way they did before. So we have an expression that looks like this. This whole quantity times pi r squared. Just like last time, we're going to put that force net into our force net over mass equation to get acceleration. Our mass is, again, the mass of the fluid in the acceleration zone, which is density times volume where delta x is the size of the acceleration zone. You'll notice that once again, the area of the faucet cancels out. Not a lot canceled out, but the um, area does. Just like last time, once we have our acceleration, we put it into one of our motion equations. The final velocity we're calling V2. The initial uh, velocity we're putting as the velocity of the fluid in the tank, which is probably close to zero, but we'll call it V1 just to have a number to use. And then for acceleration, we have this entire mess. Density, gravity, height, plus pressure of the gas, minus pressure of the atmosphere, all over density times delta x. And then we multiply that by delta x. So we had 2a delta x. You can see the delta x is canceled, just like they did last time. We're going to move the 2 and this bottom density to the other side of the equation. And we would get 1 half density of the fluid velocity 2 squared, velocity 1 squared, density of the fluid, gravity height, pressure of the gas, minus the pressure of the atmosphere. Okay, so this is the expression we can use to find V2. We don't want to do any more algebra because that's going to make things more complicated. So I know it's not as pretty as what we had last time, but this is our expression that will allow us to find the exit velocity of the fluid. Now the fluid matters. Now the planet matters. The depth of the fluid matters. The pressure of this gas matters and the pressure of the atmosphere also matters, okay? So this is what our equation is going to be looking like.